really appreciate you guys taking time there. I want to thank Roy over the years. He's sponsored me to talk to different breeder groups, and so that's always been very nice of you to do. I uh, have been accused of liking breeders a little too much. I have a veterinary friend who said, I can't understand what you like about working with breeders. And I said, just try to get sad when you're looking at eight little puppies. You just can't do it. That's what I like about breeders. I do want to say, I, my, my goal here is to take and give you one thing out of each of my talks that you can maybe apply and make money with in your film. I don't like, I'm always warning people, don't change everything you're doing. I had a friend of mine, thank goodness, he came to me and said, you know, I'm doing everything wrong. And he's in, he's in Tucson, Arizona, where carbon is just rampant around it. He's the only one around that's not breaking, and he's going to change everything. I said, let's tweak your program, which is what I want you to do. But don't change everything you're doing. So one of the things we're going to talk about today as we're moving into uh, these talks is, let's see if I have this first. Good. It's managing your parasites. These happen to be my puppies, by the way, Shark Bay puppies. Um, Managing parasites came about by accident. I was just so frustrated. We would worm everybody in the kennel. We'd have white stuff all over us, and we couldn't find the kids because they were tired of deworming dogs. And the, the problem with it was, three months later, we'd find parasites on people. So we realized fecal exams don't do a lot of good in a kennel situation. We'll show you why. They're good for diagnostics. They're not good when you're trying to eliminate parasites. You can't get it done. Finally, took Dr. Ridley to Kansas State to tell me in 1993, but these parasites have been around since dinosaurs. You're not going to get rid of them. Where are they a problem? And I said, well, they're a problem in the puppy. He said, well, then figure out how to manage out of them. You can't get rid of them. you got to manage them. So that took our whole approach and changed it totally. So we're, what we're going to do is background a few things quick so we're all on the same page. And then when you get the basics of how these parasites work, it makes it easy to figure out when you're going to attack them in your kennel. Rat and hookworms in the green up there. The reason I have them in green is they're in the upper part of the intestinal tract. So people call me and say, you know, it's not you guys, it's not breeders. The clients will call, but I just had one dog, I bought this dog, he's vomiting worms. Well, it's probably not going to be these whipworms or tapeworms that are 30 feet down the intestinal tract. It's going to be roundworms. So you can kind of get an idea. We're not geniuses when veterinarians say that. We're just playing the odds. You know, in, in the middle there is Giardia and Coccidia, and it's pretty well all through the intestinal tract. I'm totally convinced that these two cannot be ridded, cannot be gotten rid of out of your kennel. So those are two that, if you can't get rid of it, you got to manage it. Man manage it so we don't have issues. Whipworms and tapeworms both can be eliminated. Those are in the lower part of the intestinal tract, some 30 feet down. So it takes a different kind of dewormer to get those. Most of the dewormers are detoxified by the time they get 30 feet through the intestinal tract. So it's a pretty rare one that'll do all the way down, and there are some that are pretty good at it, uh, but we'll go from there. So you can't get rid of them, so we've got to manage them. Timing's everything. One of the things we had to do in the 90s was figure out when should we deworm them. Because we're pouring dewormers down dogs at two weeks of age, four weeks of age, six weeks of age, eight weeks of age. And I, I kept looking at that saying, how does a two-week-old puppy get a parasite when it's nursing mom if we did our job right? And that really turned around how we looked at it. Late pregnancy, that immune system stress, for those of you who have babies, you, you can identify. Your immune system stress hormones go up. We learned that parasites get real active during that time. And we'll show that to you. What is important about that, when they get active and start laying large amounts of eggs, they're taking in massive amounts of energy, and they'll take in lots of dewormer. So it's easy to kill them at that point. It's hard to kill them when it's not in that state. But this is the key to controlling them, and we'll convince you that by the end of the day. So, and I always have to tell people, say, well, I'm up on raised debts. We didn't go, I, I spent a lot of time, please take this on. People say, oh, you raise these dogs on raised debts. We don't do that because it's easier. It's much easier to run them out in the grass and let them defecate and then bring them back in. And that's easier. But we raise them on raised decks because they're healthier. This grass looks nice and sterile with the dew on the edge, but here are the parasites. It needs dew droplets. They hatch out in those lawns and in the grasses. They climb up on the grass. That's how the horses get them. Our dogs run through there, these nice sterile green parks, groom themselves. Got parasites. Well, no, no lie. You know, they, we know they got parasites. So you can't get rid of these guys. They're really good 
at work and you're managing it. And these are round worms. And I give you a picture of these because they're 18 inches long. People say, well, this dog's pot belly, and I say, you have round worms. Well, I'm not, I'm not great, but if you've got ones that are three quarters of an inch long, you've got ones that are 18 inches long, it's got to be round worms that is causing a, a puppy to have a pot belly. And I see that I see it more than I should. And it's a failure in the veterinary field because we fail to recognize mom gives parasites to puppies. We need to do that. Females in late pregnancy, and this is done by a grad student, will lay about 85,000 eggs a day. That surprised us. We didn't know that. When that data came down, some guy did I actually called the guy and said, how did you do this? It was a PhD student. I knew he didn't count 85,000 eggs. So they did it actually by weight, molecular weight, and they fed these parasites, a certain number of them, to these dogs that had a feral death or an SPF dog. And then they measured in late pregnancy how many eggs were laid. And that's how they did this. But that was eye-opening. No wonder our puppies have it. And the roundworms will cross the placenta right before birth. So we need to prevent that. The other thing that happens is they put these eggs, they actually migrate through tissue. It's one of the reasons that I get cough. I've got a kennel right now. It's got a parasite problem. That's why they have a cough. They're going to pour an antibiotic down the puppy. It's not the, it's not the antibiotics. It is the parasites. I'm going to show you that. But the, it's, it's easy to control. These aren't contagious to humans. When we really started trying to manage these, it's because round and hooks are both contagious to humans. And I've had clients with both of them, children with both of them. So, roundworms, three species, some. Okay? Um, roundworms do what now? Pirate tail. We're going to talk about that. You're, you're ahead of the class. We've got to wait here. We will talk about that. We are seeing some resistance. It's not that Pyrantel isn't a good product. At first, I thought, oh, Pyrantel are not working. It doesn't take long to realize what we need to do is switch. If you've used Pyrantel only for more than five years, you're seeing round room resistance. You need to switch out for a while and come back. Yeah, yeah. You see it commonly. So you are right. They can be 18 inches long. I think this is atrocious. This doesn't happen in my kennel because. I tell them that right off. Ninety-five percent of the puppies in the U.S. the CDC says are born with roundworms that cross the placenta and get into the puppies. We can stop that. We can do better now. Transmission from puppies. We talked about both in the milk and, and uh, before birth. Kittens it's only in the milk, so that's how they get it. And of course, you can always ingest the eggs, as I showed you on the grass when they're running out in our exercise area. In humans, and when I lecture on the East Coast, somebody always comes up and says either. I've got a brother or sister or cousin with this. And humans, these roundworms, will migrate, and they have an affinity to hit the eye. So that's, that's what you'll see on that right eye of this child is a roundworm in the eye. So that's the reason we need to prevent these things. Life cycle is very quick. They turn around quick. Um, popped up and swallowed. People forget that. You know, I, the kennel I'm working with right now, they've been treating for six months for respiratory, so these puppies are seven to eight weeks of age. Just antibiotics don't do it. But we got to talk about deworming, and about two years ago, decided he wasn't getting any positive, he wasn't getting any dollars out of deworming, so he quit deworming his dog. So he deworms occasionally on the bitches, but every couple of years, but that's not enough to control these. So we got this. Now, what do they do? They migrate into the tissue. So if you're a parasite, this is great right after you had one of the if you're, if you're a parasite migrating through the tissue and you want to get back to the intestinal tract, it's going to be hard for you to find that. But if you get into the lung and into the bronchial, then you can cough, swallow, and they're down into the gut. So next time your neighbor is coughing and swallowing, you know, that you, that, that's how they get back there to complete their life cycle, to set back up and start growing. They cough them up. They didn't swallow, and they get right back, kind of right in the gut where they want to set up housekeeping and finish their life cycle. So that is a very important thing. I diagnose one kennel a year with that issue, and it's usually a refractory respiratory. Puppies get it about seven weeks, six, seven weeks of age, and we can't control it. So. Two, four weeks, coughed up and swallowed. And here's a life cycle. Here's a pregnant bitch, and she just passes these across the placenta, or the puppy just nurses them down. It's just to reinforce that. They go through four stages of maturing, and then they can pick them right up out of the grass, and then they can just repass them out. And the same thing can happen if, they, if they're picked up by birds.
birds, round birds, birds and mice, and you got a big hunter, so you got and you guys get asked by family, I do all the time. If the family said, should I be where my dog? The answer is yes, twice a year, especially if they're a hunter. If they eat these birds or whatever, they pick up these round birds and get in, or they can pick them up directly and then they go in and then they're passing those eggs again. So we can't get rid of these things. They are champions at, at uh, going. These are no round worm puppies, so I show pictures of them. These are good. These are already two weeks after rescuing these guys. And these are a few big puppies down in Alabama. So clinical signs. It makes sense. Gold coat pot bellies. Why? They're taking nutrition. Parasites can take the best nutrition from a puppy. Why? Because they can. So they eat the best nutrition. The second thing is they're 18 inches long. You get 100 of those in there, and they're going to be pot bellies. So those are the two things. People say, well, I didn't kill my puppies. Parasites don't want to kill your dogs. They don't want to kill our horses. That's their dinner plate. So they don't want to kill them. They don't mind dragging them down. And they don't mind if you feed parasites. Clinical signs. Um, severe ones you can get pneumonia. That's kind of unusual. Um, and we diagnose them with people, and I put that up there so it's in your notes. But I find them not much help in my kennel. Just figure they're there. Learn to manage them. 